It's one of the greatest generation's greatest victories, and also one of the bloodiest. And as we commemorate the 70th anniversary of D-Day, we are reminded that the number of survivors are dwindling fast. Fortunately, as I found out, there are still men like Sergeant Robert Bearford of Chesterfield to keep history alive. And this is where we wound up uh, chasing these buzz bombs. Bob Bearford and, uh, is turning the pages is, of his is, memory. We were in England here. With photo albums lovingly assembled by his daughter. Well, I'm sort of the family um, historian. <laughs> lost time has been found again. The difficult part is to, to realize that I'm one of the survivors and there were so many that lost their lives. Shortly after being drafted into the Army during World War II, a colonel pulled Bearford and several other men aside. And he said, how many of you men know about radar? Starboard. Radar was a fairly new technology, Steady. and those who manned it were considered Starboard. an elite unit. One British mile. and American scientists had Starboard. refined it to sea for Starboard. hundreds of miles, even at night. We would get the, the direction of the aircraft, we would get the height of the aircraft, uh, aircraft and the speed. But in June of 1944, Bearford's crew was shipped out in support of the troops landing on the beaches of Normandy. We loaded at night, so we knew something was different. But nobody told us that this was really it. Hours later, he was part of the largest seaborne invasion in history and among the bloodiest, what is now known as D-Day. The beach was covered with smoke and fire. People are dying. Guys are getting shot. I mean, it's, you know, it's a horrible scene. I think the thing that upset me the most was to see so many Americans dead in the water. Allied casualties on just the first day, at least 12,000. And Bearford was there as a radar specialist, not a trained fighter. And the question everybody says, well, were you frightened? I said, no, I wasn't frightened. I was scared to death. I really thought I was going to die. As it turned out, D-Day was the beginning of the end for Nazi Germany. Bearford's radar equipment helped the Allied forces push further into enemy territory. And he was there when American troops liberated the Buchenwald concentration camp, where it's estimated 56,000 Jews and political prisoners died. When you walk in, the first thing you see, iron gating around the whole thing, probably 16 feet high, with an arch gate, and it says, Enter by the gate, leave by the chimney. Now 93 years old, the old uniform still fits. Right. Looks pretty good. Yeah, put this on too. Because yeah, this, this is, is a... this was a, this was a very special occasion. Not long ago, and, uh, he and other D-Day survivors here. received a medal the from French the French, French government as thanks for their liberation. <laughs> but he's most proud of being a father, grandfather, great grandfather and husband to his wife Marjorie for the last 72 years. My father is fun, he's outgoing, he's a great family man, and he's a, he's a great patriot. Bob Bearford plays down his role during World War II, but reluctant heroes are still heroes. And he's glad that special ceremonies take place on the anniversary of D-Day. There's very few of us left, there's not too many and soon we're going to be gone, and I just hope that these traditions will be carried on because I think it's so important. D-Day, a battle we will never forget, thanks to the men we should always remember. Bob Bearford is from New Jersey, and he moved to Chesterfield six years ago. You can hear more from him and many other survivors and their incredible stories at the St. Louis Science Center, which tomorrow begins showing the giant screen film D-Day, Normandy, 1944.